sutra further as the person uses his mind to investigate to the utmost point he may see a good and wise advisor whose body undergoes changes. Within a brief interval, various transformations will occur which cannot be explained. This state is called having an improper mind which is possessed by a living ghost, a may ghost, or a celestial demon, and without reason speaking dharma that fathoms wondrous truths, he does not indicate such root. If he does not think he has become a sage, then the demonic formations will subside. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. Commentary This is the tenth demonic state of the form skanda called false visions and false words. Further, as the person uses his mind to investigate to the utmost point, he may see a good and wise advisor with whom he studied the drama in the past, whose body undergoes changes. Right before his eyes, the good and wise advisor suddenly turns into an old man. In the next moment, he becomes a middle-aged person, and in another instant, he turns into a young person. Then, if the good and wise advisor is a man, for example, he suddenly changes into a woman, and the person thinks, Oh, probably in his previous life he was a woman. Actually, what he is seeing is not real. These changes are the result of his false thinking. Within a brief interval, various transformations will occur which cannot be explained. Everything changes and becomes different from normal. This is similar to what people who take LSD experience. To them, everything becomes brightly colored and they cannot see clearly. They paint some bizarre paintings which no one can figure out because they just recklessly splash on the colors. After they finish painting, some people say, Wow, what a masterpiece! People actually praise them. You see, that's the way it goes. Is it the case that this cultivator has taken a drug? You ask. No, this experience is caused by the demon king. When you take LSD, the demons are also at work, making you experience changes. January 1983 Venerable Master, in our investigation of the 50 Skanda Demon's Days, everyone is welcome to bring up an opinion. We want to use everyone's wisdom to investigate the principles. In the Dharma Ending Age, everyone is greedy for quick results and shortcuts. They think they can get a lucky break, just like people who gamble and win at the first try. So some people go running around to a lot of different places. They study esoteric practices and various other dramas. They hear this place as something to offer, so they go there. Then they hear that place has something, so they run over there. Running here and there, they waste all their time on the road, but in the end, they don't understand anything. We should all recognize this kind of state if we don't it will be very easy for us to go astray. Disciple is like taking drugs, which is a serious problem in Western society. You could say that hallucin hallucinogenic drugs are transformation bodies of demons. The demons come up with a new form of drug and everyone becomes addicted to it. Even though people don't really need to take the drug, a demonic energy combined with their own habits causes them to get hooked. Nowadays, there are many Devon teachers who, without the help of drugs, hypnotize people and cause them to see lies and various things. This happens because the drugs in people's bodies are acting up. These days in the form skanta may change for the better and for the worse. If the person has enough good truths, the changes will be for the better. But people whose good rules are insufficient will change for the worse. There are all sorts of transformations. This state is called having an improper and devon mind which is possessed by a living ghost, a male ghost, 
or a celestial demon and without reason speaks speaking dharma uh, that fathoms wondrous truths. When a ghost or a demon from the heavens enters your mind, you may act like those people who claim they know how to lecture the sutras or speak the dharma or who call themselves enlightened elder masters. Such people start speaking the drama for no reason, with no idea what they are talking about. They say they have fathomed wondrous truths, but they have not really done so. They are not really speaking the drama either. They take what is wrong to be right and claim that their drama is the most wonderful. Praising themselves and putting others down, they call themselves the foremost elder masters. It does not indicate sagehood. This dad is not a good one. If he does not think he has become a sage, then the demonic formations will subside. They will disappear. But if he considers himself a sage, then he will be vulnerable to the demon's influence. If he thinks he has attained the fruition of a sage, he will soon find himself in the house. He will attain the fruition of the house. Sutra Ananda, these ten states may occur in dhyana as one's mental effort interacts with the form skanda. Commentary Ananda, these ten states described above may occur in the still contemplation of dhyana as one's mental effort interacts with the form skanda. These states involve the form skanda when the mind interacts with and investigates the form skanda to the ultimate. One may experience such states. Sutra, dull and confused living beings who do not evaluate themselves. Encountering such situations in their confusion, they fail to recognize them and say that they have become sages, thereby uttering a great lie. They will fall into the relentless house. Commentary Dull and confused living beings who do not evaluate themselves. Living beings are substubborn and intractable, and they do not wake up from their delusion. They do not take stock of themselves to see what level they are at. Encountering such situations, such demonic states in their muddled confusion, they fail to recognize them and say that they have become sages. They claim, Oh, I am a Buddha. I am enlightened, I have attained sagehood, thereby uttering a great lie. They are really telling the greatest lie. They will surely fall into the relentless house. January 1983 We have to be very cautious in all aspects. As he said, if you are off by a hair's breadth in the beginning, you'll miss by a thousand miles in the end. We keep studying the Buddha drama, but we end up falling into their house. Why? Because we haven't really been able to follow the teachings. We haven't really been able to refrain from lying, stealing, sexual misconduct, taking intoxicants, and killing. If you can't even hold the five precepts, how can you think of accomplishing Buddhahood? First of all, you must not kill. That doesn't simply mean eating vegetarian food. I haven't killed any creature with my own hands, you may say. That doesn't necessarily mean you haven't violated the precept of not killing. Holding this precept means you must not even harbor anger toward people in your heart. That is not easy to do. As I said earlier, I also have a strong urge to kill, but I want to stop killing. I want to liberate, liberate creatures instead of killing them. If I wanted to kill creatures, all the fine hairs on my body could turn into flying swords, sharp knives, lances, and spears to stab people to death. That's how fire my fine hairs could be. That's how powerful the urge to kill is. But I'm not going to kill. Why not? Because I realize that killing living beings is equivalent to killing bodhisattvas, killing ahas, breaking up the harmonious, the harmonious sangha, and shedding the Buddha's blood. That's why I don't kill. Not stealing, gaining something by improper means or 
taking something that does not belong to you without informing the owner is considered stealing. If you take something from its place without any knowing about it, without anyone knowing about it, you are stealing. The causes, conditions, methods, and karma of stealing are explained very clearly in the Brahmana Sutra. The causes, conditions, methods, and karma of killing are also explained dearly in that text. Not engaging in sexual misconduct is also like that. It only counts if you don't have thoughts of lust in your mind and your nature. To hold the precepts against lying, you shouldn't lie under any circumstances, nor should you take intoxicants. The stimulating effect of alcohol causes you to be unable to function normally. It also makes you lose your wisdom, and once that happens, you do stupid things. These are the precepts of not killing, not stealing, not engaging in sexual misconduct, not lying, and not taking intoxicants. Buddhists should pay close attention to these five precepts and avoid committing the slightest transgression. Only then are they qualified to the to be called Buddhist. Some of you casually entertain thoughts of killing, stealing, engaging in sexual misconduct, and deceiving people with lies, and you casually take intoxicants. You are greedy for everything, being greedy for food. Is equivalent to taking intoxicants. If you are so greedy for food that you eat until you're fat as can be, you are also taking intoxicants. We who study Buddhism should constantly examine ourselves on this point. We must be very attentive, without making the slightest mistake or being sloppy at any moment. On the other hand, we should not be too rigid. We should apply the precepts in a flexible way. Then I can be a little more expedient. I can still kill, still engage in sexual misconduct, lie, and take intoxicants. You say. That's not what flexibility means. It means we should bind ourselves up with the five precepts so tightly that we have no room to turn around. When we receive the five precepts. We are not being bound up by the five precepts. We should look into this well. A certain person in Canada used my name to treat his disciples, alleging that I certified him. People who tell great lies like that are about to fall into the hell of ripping out tongues. Sutra, in the Dharma ending age after the Tathagata enters Nirvana. All of you should rely on and proclaim this teaching. Do not let the demons of the heavens have their way. Offer protection so all can realize the unsurpassed way. Commentary: In the Dharma ending age, after the Tathagata enters Nirvana, all of you should rely on and proclaim this teaching. Ananda. You all should follow and practice the dharma that I have explained for you. In the future dharma ending age, after I have entered nirvana, you must propagate these teachings. Do not let the demons of the heavens have their way. Offer protection so all can realize the unsurpassed way. Maintain and support the true and orthodox Buddha dharma so that you will be able to attain the supreme fruition of the way. The Feeling Skanda, Volume Eight, Chapter Three, Sutra. Ananda, when the good person who is cultivating samadhi and shamatha has put an end to the form skanda, he can see the mind of all Buddhas as if seeing an image reflected in a clear mirror. Commentary. Ananda, when the good person who is cultivating samadhi. Who cultivates the skill of directing the hearing inward to hear his own nature? Who cultivates perfect understanding through the faculty of hearing and shamatha, the quieting of thoughts, the practice of stopping so that contemplation is possible, has put an end to the form skanda. He can see the mind of all Buddhas as if 
seeing an image reflected in a clear mirror. What happens when he puts an end to the form Skanda? He can see the Dharma door of the mind seal of all Buddhas just as if he was seeing his own reflection in a mirror. Sutra, he seems to have obtained something but he cannot use it. In this, he resembles a paralyzed person. His hands and feet are intact. His seeing and hearing are not distorted and yet his mind has come under a different influence so that he is unable to move. This is the region of the feeling skanda. Commentary. He seems to have obtained something but he cannot use it. In this, he resembles a paralyzed person. I talked before about the Kumbanda ghost, paralysis ghost. When a person falls under the influence of such a ghost, his hands and feet are intact, not missing. His seeing and hearing are not distorted or confused, and yet his mind has come under a deviant influence so that he is unable to move. This is the region of the feeling skanda. This state falls within the realm of the feeling skanda. Sutra, once the problem of paralysis subsides, his mind can then leave his body and look back upon his face. It can go or stay as it pleases without further hindrance. This is the end of the feeling skanda. This person can then transcend the turbidity of views. Contemplating the cause of the feeling skanda, one sees that false thoughts of illusory clarity are its source. Commentary. Once the problem of being immobilized by the paralysis ghost subsides, his mind can then leave his body and look back upon his face. When you are within the feeling skanda, it is like being paralyzed by a kumbanda ghost. So you cannot get free. If this situation disappears and the feeling skanda is broken through, your mind can leave your body and you can see your own face. It can go or stay as it pleases. You may go or not go as you wish. You are completely unfettered and without further hindrance. This is the end of the feeling skanda. The feeling skanda is gone. This person can then transcend the turbidity of views, which is one of the turbidities of the evil world of the five turbidities. Contemplating the cause of the feeling skanda, one sees that false thoughts of illusory clarity are its source. Once the feeling skanda is broken through, its source is also done away with. Sutra Ananda, in this situation, the good person experiences a brilliant light. As a result of the excessive internal pressure in his mind, he is suddenly overwhelmed with such boundless sadness that he looks upon even mosquitoes and gadflies as newborn children. He is filled with pity and unconsciously bursts into tears. Commentary Ananda, in this situation, the good person experiences a dazzling brilliant light. As a result of the excessive internal pressure in his mind, a kind of feeling arises spontaneously. He has continually been controlling his own thoughts and has overdone it. When the inner suppression becomes excessive, he is suddenly overwhelmed with such, such boundless sadness and compassion for living beings that he looks upon and cherishes tiny creatures, even mosquitoes and get flies, as if they were his own newborn children. The Chinese word for newborn means red, referring to the red color of infant children's skin. He's filled with pity and unconsciously bursts into tears. Without knowing it, he starts to cry. Sutra. This is called overexertion in suppressing the mind in the cause of cultivation. In suppressing the mind in the cause of cultivation. If he understands, then there's no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. If he realizes that and remains unconfused, then after a time it will disappear. But 
if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of sadness will enter his mind. Then, as soon as he sees someone, he will feel sad and cry uncontrollably. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Commentary: This is called overexertion in suppressing the mind. In the course of cultivation, this situation may arise in the course of cultivation. It happens because you have been suppressing your thoughts too hard. If he understands, then there is no error. If you understand and say to yourself, "Why have I started to、uh, started crying for no reason? I should change this state." Then there will not be any problem. This experience does not indicate sagehood. It does not mean you have attained the great compassion of oneness with all. Don't think that caring for mosquitoes and other small creatures, as if they were your own children, is genuine. Great compassion of oneness with all. If he realizes that and remains confused, then after a time it will disappear. The state will go away. But if he considers himself a sage, if he says. Oh, now I have the great compassion of oneness with all. My cultivation has really succeeded. Then a demon of sadness that is an expert at crying will come. It cries no matter whom it meets. This demon will enter his mind and take possession of him. Then, as soon as he sees someone, he will feel sad and cry uncontrollably without knowing he why he is so sad. When I was in Manchuria, I knew a woman named Liu Qingtong, who was like that. Whenever she met someone, she would start crying and say, "In the past, you were my son, and now you've come back. You found your mother." With her tears, she managed to confuse the other person into believing that he had actually met his mother. In fact, he'd encountered a demon, lacking proper samadhi. Proper concentration, he will certainly fall. If you follow a demon, you will fall into the house. December the second, nineteen ninety-three. In the past, Liu Qingtong was possessed by the demons described in the fifty skanda demon states, and now there are two others. One of whom is especially powerful because she knows a drama for some morning spirits. A woman from San Jose,、uh, San Jose, who took refuge with me later, went to study under her and contracted cancer upon her return. It was that person's doing. The San Jose woman came back to see me, but paid, but I paid no attention to her. Even if I were to do something to help her, I wouldn't let other people know. Sutra. Further, Ananda, Ananda, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. At that time, he has a sublime vision and is overwhelmed with gratitude. In this situation, he suddenly invites tremendous courage. His mind is bold and keen. He resolves to equal all Buddhas and says he can transcend three asamkhya yas of ends in a single thought. Commentary: Further, Ananda, in this state of samadhi, the good person, which includes all good people who are cultivating the way, sees the the disinter disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. Among the five skandhas. He knows that the form skanda is gone, and he is quite clear about the feeling skanda. At that time, he has a sublime vision, and is overwhelmed with gratitude. A very special and rare vision appears in his mind, and he feels excessively grateful for it. However, it is is as bad as insufficiency. There's little difference between going too far and. And not going far enough. Neither is in accord with the middle way. For example, while traveling, if you go beyond your destination, it is the same as if you had not arrived at all. 
in this situation, in this state of samadhi, he suddenly invites tremendous courage. His mind is bold and keen, fearlessly vigorous. He resolves to equal all Buddhas, saying, The Buddha and I are the same, and he says he can transcend three asamkiyas, limitless numbers of ends in a single thought. He says that he can transcend the first, second, and third asamkiyas of ends in the space of a single thought. Therefore, he says he is a Buddha. Not only does he say he is a Buddha, he says everyone is a Buddha. Such a person has fallen prey to wrong knowledge and views. It is true that everyone is potentially a Buddha, but one has to cultivate in order to realize Buddhahood. Even when one cultivates, it is not possible to become a Buddha in a single thought. It takes a long time. Although the time can be shortened if one understands the Buddha Dharma and practices according to it, one still cannot attain Buddhahood in a single thought. This person cultivates but he lacks wisdom and does not have a good and wise advisor to instruct him. Although he works hard at cultivation, he develops wrong views along the way, seeing that such a long time has passed without his becoming a Buddha. He simply states that he is a Buddha. This is the experience of praising oneself as the equal of the Buddhas that occurs during the breakdown of the feeling skanda. He says he is the same as all Buddhas. Actually, with that one mistaken thought, he is already possessed by a demon. Sutra. This is called being too anxious to excel in cultivation. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. If he realizes that and remains unconfused, and then after a time it will disappear. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of insanity will enter his mind. As soon as he sees someone, he will boast, boast about himself. He will become extraordinarily haughty to the point that he recognizes no Buddha above him and no people below him. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Commentary In the lecture on the Suragama Sutra, we have now reached the very important section on the 50 kinds of devon states caused by the five skandhas. If people who cultivate do not understand these 50 skandha demons, they will easily go astray in their cultivation. If you can recognize the states of these skandha demons, then you will not get carried away with reckless boasting and assume that you are an extraordinary individual. Therefore, I invite you to encourage your relatives and friends to come listen to this session on the 50 skandha demons so they will know about the states which occur in cultivation. This is called being too anxious to excel in cultivation. This state occurs as a result of your efforts in cultivation. Because of this overexertion, overexertion resulting from transformations within your own nature, you become courageous. There is nothing wrong with courage and vigor if you use them to advance in your cultivation of the Buddha Dharma. But you must not become conceited and say, Oh, I'm a Buddha myself. So you are a Buddha? The Buddha spoke the three treasuries and the twelve divisions of the canon. How many treasuries and divisions have you spoken? You don't even understand them, yet you say you are a Buddha. Isn't that absurd? The Buddha spoke the entire canon and you haven't spoken even a single treasury or division of the canon. So how can you claim that you have become a Buddha? Even if you could explain the treasuries and divisions and understand their principles, at best, you could call yourself a disciple of the Buddha, not a Buddha. But this person, feeling that everyone in the world reveals the Buddha, wants to be a Buddha too, so that after he dies, people will make offerings to him. Actually, after death, he will be buried in the ground. 
he will turn to dust and nothing will be left of him. If he understands it, then there is no error. It is all right to have such courage as long as you understand that it is merely a state and does not mean you have become a sage. This experience does not indicate sagehood. If he realizes that and remains unconfused, then after a time it will disappear. But if he considers himself a sage, saying, Oh, this means I've become a Buddha, then the demon of insanity will enter his mind. So you see, if you do not even recognize the 50 Skanda demons, how can you become a Buddha? This demon is one of arrogance, pride, and conceit. It bores into his mind and takes possession of him, deriving out his soul. The demon king takes over and acts as his soul. As soon as he sees someone, no matter who the person is, he will boast about himself and how he is right and everyone else is wrong. He denigrates others to exalt himself. They are all in the wrong and he alone is honored. He thinks he has become a Buddha. He will become extraordinarily haughty toward everyone to the point that he recognizes no Buddha above him. There are no Buddhas above. Why? Because he is a Buddha himself and he sees no people below him. Then what does he see? He says that everyone is a Buddha, that he himself is a Buddha and that there is no Buddha above him. He himself is Buddha and in the future everyone will become a Buddha along with him. That is why he sees no Buddha, no people below. Lacking the proper state of samadhi, he will certainly fall.